And three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. This is Craig Dialogue. We're going to talk about uh, entertainment culture today. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. I think Tiff, wait, I was asking before it started, like, I think Tiff ended today. I think I saw that somewhere where it was like, uh, today's the last weekend of Tiff, and it was like a big thing. Okay. I, did you notice like more commercials? recently for tiff or have i just not paid attention i didn't see anything oh okay well i guess maybe like cb24 i don't know like for some reason this year i was like i I had noticed tiff whereas usually it's like it'll be like weeks later and you're like oh yeah tiff already happened you're like oh right uh you know maybe I mean? you just didn't we didn't we don't really pay attention at the time those t- like before we right totally really... yeah, yeah, yeah for sure but it, i i always looked and looked not forward but like i always knew about it but i didn't like I just it's for me to find out what movies are coming out, right? Or right. What totally. Interesting movies are out there. For sure. For sure. Especially yeah, I guess if you like, if you're into it. Well, I I know some people that were working TIFF, so oh, okay, I guess awesome. for me, like it would just be a topic of conversation. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's that's interesting. Like I never even, I have no idea about TIFF, right? Yeah. So I only knew, peripherally about TIFF because of because of you because you used it as a means and also the oscars for you to like <laughs> yeah. right because you'd be like oh this movie's coming out it's gonna be a good one to watch etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah it's just for me to find out what movies to see right right right. Yeah. and and then you'd see like different movies that are like uh this movie like slumdog millionaire it was a tiff film yeah um there's a few other movies that i saw that were like tiff films mm-hmm. like they always like brand it and I, I would always be like why are they putting these in the theater now after all this time of it being already released. So, like, in my head, I thought, like, once a movie's made, it gets put out, right? No. Right? No, that's actually not the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. No, no. So, like, I was watching the interview with uh, Guy Ritchie, and he was saying how, like, he made King Arthur, but he had to sit on it for two years before they released it. Yeah. It was already done, but, like, yeah. they couldn't release it for, like, two years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's so weird. But, like, you never think about the economics of, like entertainment you know yeah and like so tiff so we we look at tiff from like a consumer perspective like oh it's gonna be a festival for you it's like i get to see what comes out you know Mm. but for these movie producers they're like looking to sell their movies at tiff yeah so it's like essentially a trade show so if you don't know what a trade show is it's like it's like a big warehouse style like room and then you just or Mm -hmm. like a hall and then everyone's got a booth and then because I used to do this, like, when I worked in Hong Kong, I was, like, a, I was, like, a buyer. Yeah. And they were, like, sellers. So, like, okay. um, buyers would go around, they'd look at interesting products, and then you'd be, like, okay, I want to purchase this from you. And then mm. they just rebrand it. You know okay. What I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so, like, there's, so there's this whole, like, subculture of people that engineer things. Mm-hmm. And then, like, big corporations, they back it and they buy it. They pay for it, right, to be mass produced. It's, it's not unlike when uh, Facebook purchased Instagram. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, so I I just I find that that interesting that we we don't really realize how pervasive entertainment is within our society. Mm-hmm. And then that's where I came up with that revelation of like um all consciousness seeks to expand or entertain itself. So from like an expansion point of view, it's like education, right? You're like trying to like like expand your understanding of the world around you yeah and then like from an entertainment perspective it's like that's why like the dolphin will do drugs too it's like it's just entertaining its itself on yeah. what's available in this world right you know and like what is what does it mean to be a human being mm-hmm. you know right like what does it mean to be a human being uh, if not to just expand or entertain yourself yeah because like if we're cogs in a wheel why don't you just get like robots yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, I think that's it's part of, uh, like, like a method to also make you kind of live. You know what I mean? Like, totally. Yeah, yeah, for a, sure, for sure. Yeah, like as a, just an evolutionary thing. It's like, okay, how, like, are we, like the, what's like, the organisms in us? Like, okay, we got to make this guy. We want to live. Yeah, it's just true. like making this okay, entertain to you know and kind of like bring enjoyment to life so that he continues living it's, it's like 
I don't know how to like you know what I mean. I don't know if it's, I'm explaining. It, it's almost like um, this exactly. There's this there's this line that's like we are the universe realizing itself. Yeah. And it's like, but what do you do when you realize that you're in a simulation, like a video game? Yeah. yeah. Right. You're just like, well, I just enjoy the video game. Yeah. But then I think that's why a lot of people feel really distraught with life because they're like, well, what does life mean to mm-hmm. me? Like, what what do I got to do with my life? Yeah. And they think it's all about like having a job and like mm-hmm. like following the the standard paradigm of like let me get a let me go to school yeah. let me get a car let me go to university let me get a family let me get a house yeah. and let me start it all over again right. you know that that's like that's like the standard western paradigm or if if not like social paradigm like economically driven mm-hmm. paradigm right like yeah. you have to fit into a box mm-hmm. right whereas like the world isn't really about being in a box you know so But, all right, so when I was in Hong Kong, this is what was super interesting. I was, like, in the subway, and I saw, like, this ad for insurance, right? And and the person that I was with was, like, that's where social narratives come from. And I'm, like, what do you mean? And they're, like, the whole idea, because, like, the ad was about, like, go to school, get a car, buy a house, Mm -hmm. get children, let us help you along the way Mm -hmm. with insurance. Yeah. And I was, like... I never thought of it like that, but it's like they're saying that insurance companies were the ones who built out this this idea in our heads that we had to follow this stream, but that was just for them to like sell products. It's sort of like school, right? Or school, is it the mm-hmm, also yeah. the other way around too? Like, like they created this? No, no, no. It, it's not because it's like there was no deviation. There's no like choose what you want to do, you know. It was just like these are the set paradigms back back in like ten years ago or something when I was working in Hong Kong. Oh, okay. Maybe it's, it's not now. Like now, I think it's changing, and that's what I'm like. What I'm saying, it's like we're beginning to hit this like different stage in uh-huh. our understanding of the world, where it's like maybe we don't have to follow the general social narrative, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah, but it's sort of like school, right? So, like, school was created to mimic factory work. Okay. Right to like streamline things, and like that's why they had like the bell. Because the bell was your break time in the factory, and like they just wanted to like organize things better. But now there's like alternate forms of education, right? Like hack schooling. Do you remember that uh, from the TED Talk? Mm. Do you ever see that TED Talk where like it's a kid who like learned, like he's like, oh, I really want to learn about like surfboards or something, and then like he'll go and work right. in a shop, and like that was his education. He learned about like economics, math, like building, engineering, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I think now we're starting to break away from, like, the the general social paradigm. Mm-hmm. Which, if you look at, um, like, the 60s when, like, psychedelics and, like, expanding your, like, consciousness was big. Yeah. Right? Like, Jay, um, not Jay-Z, uh, Jimi <laughs> Hendrix. That's when he got big, right? Mm-hmm. Like, in the 60s. And then, like, all these people started getting killed. Yeah. Right? Like, whether it be, like through Mm -hmm. gang stuff or like the government killing you but like if you have a whole society where it's like um we shouldn't follow the social narrative and that's also when like um the vietnam war or something came out Mm -hmm. they were like against all that yeah you know what i'm saying so so then you see this uprising of people who don't want to be contained in a box but then we're like, okay, we got to put them back in the box. Let's just slaughter all these like these free thinkers. Mm-hmm. So then we we have up next are the our parents' generation, which were all about being in a box, right? Yeah. And then now we're the byproducts of our parents and them being like, well, do whatever you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, sure, you should follow a certain box, but I think we're more open minded now. So I think it, it's mm-hmm. like cyclical. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So okay. like we're going from like free thinking to box to free thinking to box to free thinking. I think that's just the cycle of evolution, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. interwoven in that is like cult, uh, entertainment within yeah, our yeah, entire yeah. culture. Yeah. You know, if you look at like what is the one underlying thing between like the box and the non-box is like entertainment and education. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So you, you were you were watching the Apex um, Com- uh, compet- uh, competition thing. Yeah. Yeah. And. Well, yeah. I mean, that's 
It's all part of the entertainment, right? Like No, no, but like what what was it about? Cuz like you were saying like Oh, like the winner gets um 500k. Mm, yeah, totally. Right. So and it's like that's a huge sum of money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And also like UFC starting to get big, you're getting sponsorship deals, but like at the end of the day it's to sell products, but how do we sell products but through entertainment? Mm-hmm. You know, like like in in the movies like um Mamma Mia. Yeah. Um, tourism organizations will give you like money to create a movie that features specific places. Yeah. You know? And then like that's like one of the biggest reasons why I went to Greece was because of uh, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> right? Because it looks so cool. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh, it's probably going to look like that, you know? And then you go there and then you spend your money in that place and it's like, it's so interwoven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then you were you were recently watching the PlayStation um, Expo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The TGS, yeah. yeah. They had a racing one, mm-hmm. the same thing, like competition-wise. Yeah. Like, uh, like, what do you mean by that? Like, what are you... Like, just, you were you're just watching a whole... Yeah, it was like, like it, as if you're, you're watching a NASCAR race that's in... What, in what I'm saying is, like, your, your finger is more on the pulse of entertainment because you're, like, consuming it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, whereas I'm like, like I'm over here, like watching like podcasts or something. You are too, but it's like, you're you're also like indulging in the entertainment industry. Yeah, you know more so than I would say me. So that's what like. But it's all entertainment then. All right, explain. Podcasts are entertainment. Right, but I said, uh, expand or entertain itself. Yeah, podcasts are more. They are, yeah, entertaining, but it's more about, like, the expansion. Even if something's boring, if you're still, like, learning something. It's not like, it's not like entertainment where it's like, let me just enjoy something. Mm-hmm. I'm not, like, enjoying the podcast. I'm, like, learning from the, I'm like, oh, that's a new idea. I'm, I'm expanding the whole time. Yeah. Right? But you could also get that from entertainment. <laughs> That's what I've always gotten from entertainment. Yeah, but watching somebody play like video games, that's not educational. That's entertainment. That's pure, value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. And you're actually in that. Like you, you watch people, like you were just watching the Apex thing. Yeah. And then you watch like the PlayStation thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, why do you watch the, like, what's it about? Like, deconstruct it, you know? Uh, that, for entertainment. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I mean, like, deconstruct, like, what is. What what is it about? Like for somebody who doesn't actually know what those things are. Mm-hmm. No, it's just like a sport in a way. You're watching it for entertainment, right? But what is the sport? No, I'm just saying like like <laughs> like go over it. Like, uh, I don't know how to break that down. Well, just... there's people who are playing video games on a screen. Oh, like that. <laughs> and yeah. they're playing against each other in different countries. Well, they're all in one place, but yeah. Right, right, but they're, they're like different team countries. So that yeah, right, yeah, so you go into playing. what it is like. Oh, well, yeah. There's like it's it's uh, a bunch of players that are from all over the world in an area where they're competing for the 500k. So they like fly in. Yeah, they're all in one area. Right, they're in Poland where this thing is happening. Okay. Yeah. And it's it's sort of like a like. And some of them have like some of them uh, are like part of a whole. Um, you can say like a league or like some kind of like, like you know how, uh, like there's individual teams, but uh-huh. then they have like sponsorships and things like that. And then there are some teams that are independent. Oh, that's fascinating. In that too. So that there's like one of the teams that won, they're like, these guys will probably get more sponsorships now because they have, they just like, they're a good team, mm-hmm. but they are independent. And do you see currently. like, a, do you see like a growing viewership towards it? Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, in general, this is all esports it, under that category. Uh, but this is like, I don't know if this is their first, uh, Apex's first uh, thing like this. But uh, yeah, these things are growing. I, I, when I looked at it, I think it was, they had quite a, uh, like, quite, like some odd hundred thousand or a few hundred thousand people watching, I think. Wow. Yeah. Live? Like in that moment? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or less than hundred thousand, let's just say. I think just to make sure. But like yeah, watching it live. And how much how much would you say like people spend on like the setup? Like if you were to guess, like how much money goes into like 
the production of it because yeah, there's a lot of money that goes into right, that. right, and they're, they're earning like uh, five hundred thousand. You said the players, yeah. yeah, totally. So like, if you're if you're willing to give out five hundred thousand in a sound business model, you have to have way more than that making. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, be, right. Totally. Yeah. And sort of like, um, so now now go into like the movie industry because like these are the things that you like specialize in more than me because you, uh-huh. know? you watch them. So like, yeah, like so how does the movie industry work? You know. Uh. I mean, I like pe- people get funding, you know, and like, um, yeah. So like, yeah, like this is where TIFF helps in, in a lot of those, especially like the slum dog, what I can remember was, uh, they look for movies that they think will sell. Right. And then if it does well, it gets some kind of recognition, then they will end up getting, um, uh, uh, what's it like, uh, Spon- not sponsored. What's the word? Like where they can then sell, like put it into theater distributors, yeah. like or like someone like Warner Bros. or like someone like that will be like, okay, we can make the, make we can make uh we can put this in more theaters, things like that, and then make whatever DVDs or Blu-rays or whatever that. And like, how much are how much like goes into a movie? Like to make a movie? Yeah. Uh, it depends. I think. <laughs> All right. So Some like can be average. Like give me, give me a blockbuster. Go go blockbuster. Well, if you go blockbuster, then you, you can have movies that can go up to three hundred million to make. So that's insane, right? right? And then, and how much is the deficit we're in? Like the not we're not us, like America, like America, yeah, trillion something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's three hundred million. Okay, yeah. cool. Three hundred million, but they expect to um, make back more than that, right? Right, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Like for instance, all these Disney movies, uh, at least five, six of them. Remember, I was showing you had reached. Uh, a billion yeah and they were didn't i don't even think they were none of them were even close to 300 million right okay and what what about like netflix streaming uh like go into the economics of that so well then that that that, then you're using like the internet as a as a as a way to so you're totally uh, like circumventing like physical copy costs and like you don't need physical copy costs and as well as you're breaking the uh uh, like uh, you don't need to follow these uh, country some country laws and things like that like so you can't you can simultaneously release something across the world at the same time versus uh, before you have to get some sort of rules or regulations passed in each country kind of thing to have something released which is actually similar to um, Apple Music now so now Apple Music you oh, mean wait, 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 Apple how, in how, general what, how, how, what, products what's... Wait, wait, quick pause on that. So how much would you say goes into, like, Netflix? How much they make? Yeah, yeah. Like a rough estimate. So we're looking at, like, 14... I don't know their numbers exactly, but... No, like, rough estimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're paying, like, 14 bucks a month. You get how many users? Five users? Yeah, yeah. And then how many people are... But they're... Subscribers. Right. So, like... Uh, say, I don't know how much money they they're actually making. I don't. They haven't. I think I calculated this one. Is, or like I heard this on a podcast. It's mm-hmm. like a near near like a hundred million a month. Okay. If not more, like right. a billion, not a billion. Hundred million a month. That's not bad. Or more, like something like yeah. That's why they like can, unreasonable. I mean, like maybe that's 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 why they're popping out so many shows. But yeah. the thing with them, with their their. Um, uh, their way of doing it is they just pump out everything they you know and then it's like the, not all of them become successful the only ones that become successful then they'll make another season over something but like I don't know how long that kind of uh, thing will last if they keep doing that okay yeah totally yeah, yeah. so then There's... now now big plus they didn't have competition before now competitions is coming like Disney Plus and stuff, so that could also shift their way of but still, making. Right, right, right. But in general. In, in, yeah, exactly. Even though it's in like inter fighting, who cares? Yeah. I'm just talking about like the, the totalness of it. Yeah. Uh, so now what about like um, streaming, like Apple streaming services like music? Yeah, the same kind of thing, right? Yeah, like Spotify too. Like a lot of artists will like go independent now yeah. and then they'll just like. Um, it's just easier to do that, and then they can have drop, the like, world listen to your music versus uh, totally, yeah, yeah. Like you know, in order to release CDs and stuff, you have to okay, uh, these sort of rules you got to meet 
in Canada or in whichever country. And right. then you still, like, there's more money involved and, in order to release that. And logistics is crazy where it's like yeah. you have to send it to a printer, like a, like a CD yeah, yeah, master, yeah. and then they'll yeah. print it onto a CD, and then you got to, like, There's so many people it, involved, yeah. yeah right? Yeah. But then yeah. if you just drop a, sa- a song on, like, um, Apple Music, mm-hmm. that gets released instantaneously. And I know, like, a lot of people will just, like, drop it the next day or something. Yeah. As soon as they're done, the like, logic, when Mac Miller died, uh, I listened to his new album, mm-hmm. and he like it, it had been like a week or something since Mac Miller died, and he he referenced Mac Miller, and I was like, whoa, how did he reference that? Did he like like because how quick was this, right? But it's like no, if you actually think about it, he just has to make one song, master it, and then distribute it. Whereas before, like drop it on Apple Music. Whereas before, it was all about like you had to go through distributors, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so what about like video games too? So now we're going digital, right? Yeah, and we're going cross platform too. Mm-hmm. right so like before well they still do printing like physical printing no no i know but like, all the most of the money comes from streaming totally and, now. right yeah and like what, what are we looking at for that you know like monetary wise again i don't know each each artist is different right no, no like or in, they in, in the industry in the industry i don't know how much they're like we're like probably a billion no 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 video games oh bill uh video games is you make more money in video games than in movies yeah, it's like a billion dollar industry, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's sixty dollars to buy a game. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's, so exactly, you end up spending. Uh, you end up making a lot more, in 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 the, like compared to a movie. Right. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. totally. So like, and and then now we get into like, um, even like live shows, people will pay for those. Um, video games on your phones just like if you just look at yeah. how much people consume entertainment yeah, i mean that, apple just released uh arcade apple arcade or something and it's like 4.99 a month and right then, and then a bunch of different games you can play on the phone so now now and then like with ufc uh all these like fighters are becoming super famous like um khabib who just won yeah um all of these like emperors or whatever in like Saudi Arabia. It was Saudi Arabia. Well, I keep saying that. It's uh, Dubai. Dubai. So like all of them want like photos with him, right? And it's like, yeah, you guys are making like billions or trillions of dollars, but what is it you truly seek? And it's like entertainment. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you may be like a robot pumping out trillions mm. of dollars, mm-hmm. right? Like you have unlimited money. What do they buy? Like cars, you know? Yeah. Um, Pusha T's new song was like, um, we, we're all broke. We're yeah. all broke because I, I have like twenty rollies and I still want more. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, you have that broke mentality. It's not real. I don't think it's a broke mentality. I think it's just like we're seeking out entertainment. Yeah, you know. And then the expansion is like the education. Like you have those like, you know, those, like Neil deGrasse Tyson's is mm-hmm. like an expansion person, right? Right. And I think that's like. And then if you look at who we venerate as a society, even if you have trillions of dollars you care so much about people who are entertaining like mike tyson yeah right you're like oh i remember when you're a great fighter you're such a great fighter oh i love your movies you're so good you know like Mm -hmm. no matter how much money you earn we put the creators above everything else the creators and the educators yeah you know because i i truly believe that that's what we seek out in life like all Mm -hmm. human beings all forms of consciousness seek out to expand or entertain itself yeah that's that's the sole purpose of why we're here, mm-hmm. you know. One could like argue it's like it's about creation, you know. Like you gotta, like because I, I also say like we're echoes of creation creating, so it's like yeah, you want to expand, like you want to like proliferate. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, what's going to satisfy you is not proliferation. It's it's the expansion, or expansion in terms of like education or like entertainment. Mm-hmm. Those are the only two times we're super satisfied, right? You know, okay. Even if you're like, I guess if you're building a business and you feel satisfied, you're still like, it's like entertain. It's it's in a different realm. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and like we don't. It's just it's one of those the things that like the reason why I want to talk about it is like it's one of those things that like goes completely unsung, but it's under our nose the whole time. Right. Like we're like right now we're expanding and entertaining. Right? Mm-hmm. You listen to it. If you're listening to this, you're like, "Oh, that's really educational." It's like, boom, expansion. Or like if you're watching this on YouTube, you're like, "Oh, that's like entertaining because you're watching us play the game," right? So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Yeah. again, it's both. 
Yeah. Um, and it's it's just so sneaky how it's like right under our noses. And then if you want to like capitalize on this world, you would just pull like a like a, um, a Roman emperor thing. Who's that? Who's that guy who said um, he's like Julius Caesar? He's like if you want, just give them bread and games. Yeah. Like food, and then just entertain them, and then we can control everything. Mm-hmm. You know. But like, why would you not want to do these things? Because it's like okay. So now let's talk about enslavement, right? So, like, you have all the money in the world mm. and you seek out, like, these entertainment things. But then, like, if you are smart, you can capitalize on, like, like selling through these means, right? Yeah. And then think about, like, how much debt goes into um, creating these things, mm-hmm. right? Like, nobody has, like, $100 million in their pocket. Right. Right, to create a video game. You have to like get a lender, and then you have to pay it back. Mm-hmm. That's why it costs a lot of money, but you expect to get a lot of money in return because yeah. you have to pay back your loans, mm-hmm. right? And like, I think that the Matrix was totally real in that like we've become like batteries, mm-hmm. you know, for society. But it's not batteries in terms of our our energy. Well, I guess you could technically say that, but but what's really enslaving us is our debt. Yeah. Right. Because like, if you can get like a super low interest rate per annum per year, then it's like you just have to pay the minimum, and you get like a an advance of like a hundred thousand dollars. Right. To do with whatever you will, right? But mm-hmm. you're enslaved forever because how are you going to pay back that huge loan? Mm-hmm. But on the flip side of that, without those huge loans, those debts, we wouldn't have the entertainment to like yeah. enjoy. Yeah. You know. If you're like a video game developer, you take out a loan for like two hundred million dollars to like create the game, you're enslaved until you pay that back. Mm-hmm. You know, even if they're like, okay, you only have to pay back like a super low interest rate, you know, in the interim, yeah, until you can give us the whole amount of money back. Technically, you're enslaved, but that enslavement is what got us to where we are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it like it like circles back in on itself, and it's kind of like it's paradoxical it and ironic. Right. Because you're like, why do I hate it then? Mm -hmm. You know? And even if you are enslaved, you're still educating and entertaining. So you're still fulfilling your life purpose. So is there a negative? People just don't like the negative connotation of enslavement. Yeah. You know? Right. Like, Like when people are like, oh, there's good debt and bad debt. And you're like, okay, what's the difference? Good debt is something you can reinvest, Right. And like back to make more money and then bad debt is like a sunk cost so it's like mm. if you go into debt to buy a car you've lost that money forever because right. like you've just gotten a car right but like if you go into debt for education then it's going to circle back on itself later on right. you're going to make more money later yeah, on yeah, yeah. you get what I'm saying mm-hmm. but at the end of the day it's both debt mm-hmm. so it's like we try and we try and like portray our enslavement in like a negative way or a positive way, but at the end of the day, it's just enslavement, or it's just the system. Okay. Right? So is it like, is it a bad thing? Or is it a good thing? It's like, not, it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like... It just is. It, it, yeah. And it's like, it's weird, because we harp on things that we have in society, but we like these things in society. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's all intermingled in a way. Yeah, and it's like yeah. you can't escape it. You're kind of you're kind of getting what you need, but you're biting the hand that feeds. You know what I mean? You're like you're getting your education and your entertainment, but then you hate the system for it. But it's like, but you have to live in the system, <laughs> right? And it's like, <laughs> right, 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 right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's why you're biting the hand that feeds because it's like, why are you harping on something that you need? Mm-hmm. You need these things mm-hmm. in order to educate and entertain yourself, or else what would we be? Without yeah. education or entertainment, we wouldn't be alive. We'd just be robots. Um, yeah. Right? Because like the whole human aspect of us comes through expansion and entertainment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so fun fact. Because um, I was listening to the Steve Aoki podcast with Joe Rogan, and um, he was, he's like super anti-drug. It's like called straight edge, right? But then Joe oh. Rogan was like saying how it's funny because it's like 
eighty percent of your yeah. people are on drugs, if not ninety percent, right? Yeah. You go to an EDM concert for like the, mm-hmm. the Molly, and mm-hmm. then you get on mm-hmm. like, oh, the music's so dope, right? But like Steve Aoki's like, oh, like I hate it, you know, because like you should just enjoy the music without drugs, because he's super straight edge, whatever, whatever. And it's it's funny because like I was thinking about it because I put on his music then I was like, okay, what does Steve Aoki's music sound like, right? Mm-hmm. I don't even know. It's like it's like tribal drug music. It's putting you in a psychedelic state without putting you in, without, without, without a actually taking needing a psychedelic. A, right. So it's like it's ironic that it's like you hate drugs, but you are producing drugs. Yeah. You know, we we don't call it drugs because it's music, but like you can put somebody in a trance with music. They've done it throughout history. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've taken yeah. part in a um, um, hot tent thing. Um, what it was called so we're basically just like a super hot sauna and they just like pour water on these rocks and then it gets hotter and hotter yeah, yeah, yeah. In, inside a tent mm-hmm. right and then like it's supposed to put you in like a hallucinogenic state because it's so hot yeah or like people who starve themselves like they don't eat for like three days in order to like get into like a trance like state mm-hmm. so it's like natural highs yeah, yeah, yeah so it's like it's kind of funny again there you go it's like you're biting the hand that feeds it's like you're doing exactly what it is that you're you don't like right you know, yeah, that's, that's and funny. I, and I personally think that like we we get a lot of like a lot of there's a lot of dis- distress in the world mm-hmm. right now like with a lot of people who like don't know where they're going or like feel like they need a plan etc. But that's also why it's beneficial to have those like social narratives because like a lot of people don't know where they're going and they don't realize that like it is all just like just happening. I don't yeah. want to say random because, like, I don't believe in random, but, like, it's just happening, right? Right. And we're trying to, like, put it in a box because the, the mind can't handle the happenings. Mm-hmm. It needs, like, an explanation. Okay. Right? Yeah. So it's, like, beneficial for insurance companies to, like, create a social narrative that we buy into. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it, like, quells, quells the distress. Okay. Yeah. Right? But if you were just, you were just okay with the chaos... Mm-hmm. Then it's like you're. What is there left to do except educate and entertain yourself? Yeah, you know, like that is what we are. We're just like beings who seek out education and entertainment. Mm-hmm. Like what I don't know about you. Like what what do you find more fulfilling than those two things? Yeah, that's what I like. Right, like everyone though. Like, yeah. like oh, I want to go on a vacation. Yeah, you want to entertain yourself. Or I want to see the pyramid so I can learn more about this. Yeah, you want to educate yourself. Like, what is it? I want to have kids. Okay. But do you really, like, why do you want to have kids? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. it's like, right. I find that there are definitely people out there that, like, are very, like, kid-driven. Yeah. You know, like, they mm-hmm. they are, like, natural parents. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like, for them, it feels good to, like, nurture something and, like, bring something into this world but a lot of people don't actually feel that way they just feel they need to have kids because it's a social narrative you know what i'm saying like you hear that all the time with like oh i'm in that that child age yeah yeah and you're like why though because it was pushed on you by a social narrative so it's like is that really what you seek out and then you have like those people that like have kids and they hate it because they're like i never lived out my life Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying so it's like it's like if you're bringing the kid argument, I think that's like a faulty argument. I think it really is just right. education and entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, before, I mean, there was no things like um, birth control, right? So, okay, yeah. Then you, it's just naturally happening. You know what I mean? Oh, I see. Oh, I didn't even think about it like that. That's true. So it's like. It's like we we're back when we we're in the animal stage. Maybe like the education and entertainment is the stage that we're at now because we've already surpassed the survival stage. Yeah. Right. It's like we can choose now. Right, and it's like we have an abundance of food. It's like nobody's going starving. Yeah. Home. There's homeless people that are fat, and it's like that makes no sense whatsoever. Like there's no time in history <laughs> that you've ever seen a fat homeless person. Okay. Yeah. You're just like what? Usually homeless people are like skin and bones because yeah, they yeah, have yeah. no money yeah. to make yeah. and then like you just walk by them and you're just yeah. like dude you are huge mm. why 
made no sense. <laughs> right? So we've surpassed the survival stage in life. So what's left except the ultimate thing that we were here to do, educate and entertain. Mm. I mean, we'll expand it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Because, like, even Elon Musk, like, why does he create those products? He's not creating those products because, like, because, like, if you're creating something through an extrinsic value, you know, you're like, I'm creating this because I want to be loved. Then there's, like, you're going to hit a wall yeah. where it's, like, you're going to burn out. Yeah, yeah. Right? But if you're finding intrinsic value, because you know, remember that study with like the extrinsic versus intrinsic? Uh, if you give a kid a piece of paper and you're like, hey, draw something, they'll do it for hours. But then the second you're like, I'll give you five bucks for every painting, there's like, they stop after a while. They're like, ah, oh, this is like becoming like work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like what I get from Elon Musk is he's not extrinsically motivated, he's intrinsically motivated, yeah. meaning he's entertained by his work. Right. Right, so even if you're trying to go the argument of like, no, we we're here to develop things. That's not really true. Maybe, but like that's more of a social narrative because you're gonna hit a wall. I think you're gonna burn out. Right. But the fact that Elon Musk doesn't burn out, it's like yeah, you're you're deriving intrinsic entertainment out of this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or and, like and one feeds into the other. You mm. have to expand yourself first. You have to educate yourself before you can even entertain yourself. Yeah. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. Like, do I even like these things? Mm. Or like, because like sometimes you have like, I remember like growing up and it's like during that one time when you're getting older and it's like everybody wanted to go clubbing. And I was like, dude, I hate this. Right? But it's like, it's just the social narrative. So it's like, you, yeah, yeah. you should find entertainment out of clubbing. And you're like, no, this actually sucks. But then if you... If you expand yourself to the point where you know yourself, then you're just like, no, nah, I just don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You're very much like that. You were always very, like, you still are very much like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Right. But it's like you're you're only, like, filtering your consciousness through an entertainment lens that yeah, you yeah, choose. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Whereas, like, but then think about the flip side, whereas, like, a lot of people just do things because they're told to do it. Right. You know? That's very true. Right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm I'm like sticking to this one. <laughs> we are at we are echoes of creation creating because like everything we do is a creation, mm -hmm. right? If I punch you in the face, I'm creating pain. If I'm, um, you know, like having a baby, you're creating life. You know, yeah, everything yeah, you yeah. We're, we're creating a podcast right now. Like we are echoes of creation creating because everything we do is a natural expression of creation, creation, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, what does it mean to be human? We are all forms of consciousness seek to expand or entertain itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are my two, like, prevailing paradigms. <laughs> of, like, what does it mean to be human? You know? Or what does it mean to be anything? Because if you look at all animals, like, that's why I said all forms of consciousness. Yeah. Like, dolphins will get high. Yeah. For what purpose? Mm -hmm. Except to, like, either if expand or entertain. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Like, I don't know what they're learning. Uh, I think more like entertain. <laughs> more, a hundred percent, more like entertain. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll give ninety nine percent because like we don't know. Like they could be like, dude, we're learning how to do this. You know? I don't know. Yeah, who knows? We're not dolphins, but you know, right? There, there, there are like so many animals that do that, right? Yeah, yeah. There's like other every, ones. monkeys drunk, getting drunk. Yeah, yeah. But again, it's like you would have not known this had you expanded your education. Mm. I, do, I the reason why I don't like maybe it's a mix. It's a, I mean, doing the drugs and stuff. I think that that kind of grows your brain, like your changes experiences. There's, there's like this that, stone date theory. Yeah, where it's like when we were in apes, and then like mushrooms were everywhere, and then they yeah. eat it and they like expand their consciousness, and they're like, oh my god, we could do all these other things. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Maybe they'll eventually, you know, like the Simpsons said, take true, over the yeah. world. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, um, oh, the reason why I don't leave it with. Uh, education because like it technically is but you can exp like expanding your consciousness is more uh overarching than just saying you educate yourself like because because you can read a book through education but like mm -hmm. you can get a perspective off of like psychedelics yeah right okay like, oh, I have, uh, revelations, right? Mm. Revelations are expansions. But you're not, like, seeking out an educational route through, 
Like you're not like I'm going to educate you to re- not, reveal not, something. It's in, just revelation just come. Right. I don't. I, don't, I see what you mean. Yeah. So that that's why I don't just leave it at like educate and entertain. It's mm-hmm. it's really expand and entertain. Okay. Yeah, I just want to clarify that. Okay. But yeah. And I think that's that the lifeblood of. I think that's what we're all seeking. We're all searching for. If you look at like what everyone does, no matter what socioeconomic level you're at, mm-hmm. you're always seeking out those two things. The richest person in the world, like Khabib was taking a photo with like the sultans, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They have like a billion times more money than him, yet they wanted a photo with him. Yeah, because he entertained them. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, and like. Mm. Right? And I think if everyone, I think if we have universal basic income, we're going to hit that point where all we seek out is education and entertainment. Yeah. Even like, even yeah. like home, like homeless people that do drugs. You're like, oh man, you're doing nothing. You're just doing drugs all the day. Right? You're just doing like, uh, like meth or something or heroin. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's just a form of entertainment. Mm-hmm. They're just entertaining themselves until they meet their demise and then like move on to the next life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Crack the code of the universe right here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't hate it. Just. I mean, that's how I've always been like, right? Like, but, entertain. I just. That's why I like those movies. That's why. I, yeah, tr- you were always about that. Yeah. yeah. Because but it, what else do you do? <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I remember, uh, remember when I went through, even, like, all right, so even from a personal experience, when I had, like, this revelation of, like, nothing matters, yeah. like, literally in your life, like, it's so negative. But, like, like, people hate it when I say this. It's literally nihilism. Mm. Like, Nietzsche's nihilism, like, that is so true. No matter what you do in this world, yeah. nobody cares. And it's not going to mean anything in a million years. Yeah. Right? The, like everyone's I mean, like oh my my f- not even a million years. i'll care about you and never blah blah blah, blah right asteroid hits the earth everyone dies mm-hmm. so what so what happened right you know what i'm saying like literally nothing we do matters and i was going through like crazy existentialism I'm like well what's the point of living blah blah, <laughs> blah and then that's when you enlightened me to like well that's why i play video games and i'm like oh i get it we're just here to expand or entertain ourselves yeah you know, mm. it wasn't finalized then, but it was like you, I was already on the path. Was, to like, yeah, yeah. there's something here. Like, that's what we're all doing. And then, like, studying how people like think and like their choices and stuff. Yeah. It's like that's that's all we are seeking. Mm. And then, like, the people that think they're really clever in life that are like making money off of this. It's like, yeah, sure, but you're gonna die unhappy without having entertained yourself. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we're just thinking about numbers all the time. It's like, right? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what. Uh, yeah. It's that's the only way to kind of live on, like I mean, that's... right. And I think that's where like psycho. I think that's like the most even playing field. Like we all like are on different levels in this video game, but at the end of the day, we're all just playing a video game. So it's like, mm-hmm. and then if we get caught up in somebody else's level in the video game, then we're yeah. not doing the one thing that gives us true joy, which right. is education or entertainment or expansion and entertainment. Mm. You know, you hear it all the time like, oh, why does that person get that break? Or oh, like. How come, you know, they're always so lucky. It's like, dude, focus on your level. You know what I mean? Right. Focus on your level and just seek out those things that, because you don't want to be a cog in the wheel, you know? Mm-hmm. But you, you quickly become a cog in the wheel if you forget about the two things that make us human. Yeah. You right. Know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, any, any final thoughts? Uh... You know, it just always reminds me of the line from Gladiator. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> that's, but it, totally, there you go again. Like, it's, it's like screaming in your face. It's, that's, see, exactly, exactly. So like, it's right under your nose. They say like, enlightenment is always Yeah, I mean, that, that's why I, I, I like that line. That's why I kept saying it. I, that's what I want. I want to be entertained. Totally, totally, totally. But like, <laughs> but like, even... Because like in, in the, the like the spiritual books and stuff, they always say like, oh, enlightenment's like right underneath your nose and okay. stuff. But like if you actually look at this whole expansion and entertainment thing, mm. they've been saying it the whole time with that line, are you not entertained? Yeah. But we are the people, like the gladiator is there. We are in the audience watching the gladiator, but except we're in the theater. Yeah. But we are the people he's speaking to. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. But it's like, we're not, 
awake to it, you know? Yeah, which is fine. No, totally. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, totally. Like, if you never listen to this podcast, because you're going to do it anyways. Like you're gonna, yeah, you're, you're gonna, like it's like it's like something you can't escape. Direction. Yeah, or no, no, actually, no, no, hold on. You're you're gonna do it, but you're not gonna realize that that's the most fulfilling thing, and then you're gonna have bursts of like right. irritation, and that's why a lot of people will like hate their lives, but then they'll like fall victim to like an addiction that you know mm-hmm. gets them out of that, yeah. which which falls under like typically entertainment Mm -hmm. you know because i think the expansion route is much more difficult than the entertainment route you know that those are the two things that we can fall prey to like you can go too far in the entertainment route and you become like addicted to drugs and then like you can go into like too far into the expansion route and then you get like too caught up in your mind that you don't take the time to enjoy it right you know yeah. so it's like again it's like duality you always need better balance, balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally mm-hmm. and that's why like people like the buddha were always was always preaching like the middle way because always everything in life is a duality mm. you know there's no like there's no one thing but right. actually technically there is because like people are like like yin yang Tao, right so yin and yang are a part of the Tao. so it's like the one thing is the oneness mm-hmm yeah that's just going to a totally different topic but yeah <laughs> educate and enter- uh, expand and entertain now educate's like totally stuck in my mind <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like that's, but yeah. yeah yeah let's see all right so until next time uh have fun and um joker's coming out oh yeah and less than a month yeah, so I think that's like the next movie or review. Yeah, I think so. I keep thinking that there's something in September, but I think we watched it already. Oh, wait, isn't uh, uh, the, the the Brad Pitt one? Oh, yeah, I've been seeing commercials for that. All right, true. Does that come out soon or what? Uh, I think so, in September. Oh, okay, cool. We will entertain ourselves with that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, Till next time. Same bad time, Ooh, yes. same bad channel. Peace.